Welcome back to the news at 10. Some areas in Port Harcourt River State experienced flooding due to rainfall in the last 24 hours and residents are calling on the government to intervene while also saying that some ongoing construction work in the state may have caused the flooding. The government assisted the buildings on drainages and indiscriminate dumping of refuse as largely responsible for the predicament of the people. Our correspondent Emmanuel Eray reports. Over 24 hours of rainfall takes its toll on the office area of the Federal Road Safety Corps in Port Harcourt, the River State Capital. With parts of buildings and cars submerged, as some residents tried to make their way through the raging flood. Some other parts of the city are not spared. Residents of Ukbogu community lament the situation as they try to salvage whatever is left of their properties. All our properties are condemned. We pack the children outside. Our everything we have, all our belongings, no more is useful again. We are just managing. We are packing water. We have packed water and tire. We see it. You can see for the second time that we don't know what to do again. I just find myself to 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 eat. I just they like a, a, a nobody. Elsewhere in Waja area, the situation is no different. It's a risky drive through the flooded road. All areas are also submerged in water. Some youths barricade the road in protest of what they say is the result of ongoing construction work. The governor, however, visits some flooded areas to see things for himself. Why blaming the situation on those who build houses on drainage pathway and those who dump refuse indiscriminately? The caretaker committee chairman assures the people of government intervention. The government is planning to kick off start the program immediately with the help of Riwama and the environmental ministry or the local government are going to help the communities affected deeply with this by ways of asking them to also help us by avoiding people throwing garbages, waste bins inside the drainage system to stop the water from flowing. When we can clean our own environment on our own, the government will also help us to expand the canals for water to flow easily. The flood alert has been out there that water levels are going to rise as a result of heavy rainfall in some states in the country. What is in question, however, is the response of government and other relevant agencies to avert the possible dangers that come with flooding. Emmanuel Ere, Channels Television News. More stories on floods. Residents of the Oluyo Lake local government area in Ibadan, Oyo State, have cried out against the flooding situation in their area. They battled dilapidated roads near tumbling bridges and flooding in their homes and are calling on the state government to come to their rescue. Our community reports tonight takes a look at the challenges faced in this flood prone area and what plans the state government has to mitigate the problem. The ancient city of Ibadan, the Oyo State capital, enjoying some sunshine. People moving around to conduct their businesses, something they have not been able to do freely for some time now. This is because since the commencement of the rainy season in April, there has been little respite for the residents in the Lugale local government area. Motorists have had a hard time navigating the battle roads, which have been in dire need of repairs before the rains made it worse. They have done this road not more than at least more than two or three times. It's still the same. As if that is not bad enough, there is a bigger threat of an overflow. The rising water level is, for the lack of a better word, horrifying for residents who live in fear of the collapse of the already weakened bridge. Uh, since it, uh, this thing has been happening for the first, first four years or five years, and we, have, we have been complaining on this uh, bridge, but no response up to this time. So, and we are afraid of this bridge. If rain falls for night, we know they sleep. All of us will just dig. They think maybe the 
water go enter inside house. The plight of the people has not gone unnoticed, and the state government says it has a plan with the World Bank to control the situation. Or does it? It is not something that we address all the problems, but at least it's going to give us a drainage master plan with which we can at least project into the future. But you know flooding is a natural phenomenon. And uh, from time to time, uh, human uh, activities do uh, impact negatively such that there is flooding when we should not even have flooding in the first instance. As it stands, the state government has an enormous task of ensuring that lives and property are not lost to the flood. So what the residents of the affected communities would want to see urgently is a plan to save them from a blessing that is fast becoming a national nightmare. Soulfulness is an exhibition that seeks to help younger generation of artists on how to hone their talent and learn ethics that the craft requires. Our tribute tonight looks at how various artists called the Explorators are making this possible. Twelve artists from a group called the Visual Explorators have come to the Quintessence Gallery to show the way they think, feel and desire in an exhibition titled Soulfulness. Contemporary artist Dr. Kunle Adeyemi is the one leading the pack and he explains why they decided to do this now. I uh, choose this as a playback uh, to the community. Uh, uh, so that uh, we can actually help uh, the coming generation. So sometimes we put ourselves together, and most times rather, we put ourselves together and uh, uh, teach ourselves uh, one or two things, uh, particularly concerning the ethics, uh, the uh, skill aspect of art. And uh, we do workshops together and uh, we train ourselves. Sometimes some of them, some of the students, do not have uh, the formal training in art, uh, but we choose to uh, put them on the line, refurbish them, and today you are seeing some of the products of uh, such uh, students uh, who have actually gone through the uh, Kunle uh, studios. You know, so, so, so we, 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 we put ourselves together and call ourselves uh, the explorators. The other artists here talk about the different issues in their unique style, from what's happening in the society to the beauty of culture and tradition. I have uh, three works in this uh, group exhibition, and one of them is uh, Sight of Destiny, another one is uh, Sweden Experience, and uh, of course uh, the, the last one that uh, has to do uh, which is uh, an image that is hiding some, somehow as uh, a building form, and it is uh, anonymous. Art from the heart, that's what these artists have served the audience and hope they enjoy this enough to come for another helping when they serve the next dish. A group of concerned citizens in Taraba State are calling on the federal government to declare a state of emergency in the state until peace is finally restored on the Mambala Plateau. Spokesperson of the group, Mustafa Mohammed, made this call during a media briefing in Jalingo, the state capital, where he described the killings in Mambala as a genocide. Meanwhile, the state government says efforts are on to resolve the cause of the crash. The human rights group asked for an investigation into the killings and accused the government of failing to provide relief materials and medical attention to victims of the Mambilla attacks. It is our clarion call and declaration to the federal government that as a matter of urgent national importance to declare a state of emergency in Taraba state because the, the killings are still ongoing. 
Reacting to the media briefing, the Speaker of the Taraba State House of Assembly, represented by his Chief of Staff, says the Speaker will not join issues with the group, but advise them to present their evidence to the judicial panels set up by the state government. Taraba State government, under the leadership of the Mandar Restriction, Isham, has done everything a well-meaning leader should do in a given circumstances like this. Apart from providing security and relief materials to the people of Sabah and local government, uh, at the wake of the crisis, he has also constituted a judicial commission of inquiry uh, to deal with this issue in an unbiased but judicious manner. The chief press secretary to the governor of Taraba State says the state took prompt action in addressing the problem contrary to the allegations at the media briefing. So many arrangements have been made for security agencies to be added to the place so that we can enhance the security surveillance in that area and relief materials have been sent to the respective communities. For a government that has instituted a judicial commission of inquiry into the crisis and a government that has actually been up and doing in ensuring that this thing does not occur again, I think it's a government that requires to be given kudos. Apart from the judicial panel of inquiry set up by the state government, two other the committees were established to restore peace and reconciliation on the Mambilla Plateau. Nigerians in the Republic of Benin are asking the new ambassador designate to address some challenges they're contending with in the country. Shortly after the arrival of the ambassador to the economic capital, Kotonou, the residents pleaded for prompt action to be taken on various issues raised. In the last one and a half years, the Republic of Benin has had no ambassador from Nigeria. That perhaps explains the large turnout of Nigerians since some members of the diplomatic community at the Cotonou International Airport to witness the arrival of the new ambassador designate, Tunde Oguntuashe. We are looking forward to more of integration, particularly in the area of economy, because the economy of both countries are tied together, and that we all need to work together. And therefore, I am here to work with the Bini authority so that we can move this relationship further for the benefit of all. The group then moved to the Nigerian House, where representatives of different groups tabled some of the challenges faced by them in the country. There are some challenges we the students are facing domestically, but it's not something we we'll start harnessing here. We have issues like a uh, Roka masquerade, the School of uh, Accreditation. Some universities here in Benin Republic are not accredited, are not, they are not accredited, accredited. And then again, the problem of uh, discrimination. Plans are on so far to put it back of this car importation through the land border. I am sure, due to the absence of substantive ambassador here, was one of the reasons why I am sure the final conclusion has not been reached. We will continue to dialogue. And uh, when you talk together and you dialogue, solution will come. <laughs> As the ambassador designate settles down to his new posting, he does so with a lot of expectations from Nigerians in that country. He is, however, expected to also ensure the relations between both countries remain cordial to promote economic growth and reduce crime rate, especially along the borders. So the pictures you're about to see could be a bit hard to bear. This happened just a while ago. Several people having feared dead in a multiple accident that occurred this evening on the Kara axis of the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Eyewitness account says a container carrying articulated trucks suspected to have lost its brakes or suffered a burst tire rammed into two commercial buses, dropping off passengers at the bus stop. As of the time of this report, a few survivors were seen with various degrees of injuries, while others in more critical conditions have been brought to hospital.
Thoughts and prayers are with those who involved in that accident. Still ahead on the news at 10, though, America's Jordan Spieth wins the British Open at Royal Birkdale. That's coming up in sports news. Please join us again.